We're in the fjordlands of uh, the western coast of Norway, just doing a hike. Snow is melting off the top of the mountain over here. And as we're walking up the road, we just passed into a mid elevation zone where we have Digitalis or Foxglove. It's a really interesting, beautiful plant. It produces these, these uh, just cup like flowers. Um, it produces in its leaves a, a chemical that is used in the pharmaceutical industry for regulating heart uh, arrhythmia. Um, and at high enough concentrations, toxic and poisonous can kill you. So it's, it's a really interesting plant chemically, but we're looking at it to understand better how individual plants, flowering plants and flowering plant populations, the, their strategies for optimizing the reproductive success of their offspring. And we want to look at uh, things that individual plants are doing and populations of, of plants are doing to assure reproductive success. Some of the things that uh, we just had a group of students here looking at this noticed is that within this population of foxglove, we have different floral colors. So we have uh, kind of a, a pink, a white flower over here. If we come up here, better contrast. Here's the purple flowers right here compared to those that are more pink. So there's variation in the, in the petal colors so that um, it displays to a broader community of pollinators. Maybe pollinators that, that like more the pink color. Uh, the white colors may be more uh, attractive to moths at night. And then the darker purples may be more attractive to bumblebees. Um, and so it, it just speaks and uh, attracts a broader pollinator community. So pollinator efficiency across the community can, can be optimized. Uh, we also just looked at the fact that, and you can see there are pollinators buzzing, bumblebees right here and bees. I'm gonna take and get a little closer. Another thing that these, these plants do is uh, they produce all of their flowers on a spike. And what we can see here are the active flowers that are being produced right now, kind of uh, early midsummer. But earlier in the spring, we can see flowers that have already done the reproductive work. Um, so these were the first flowers that were produced and they've already produced fruits. So this is just the swollen ovary right here. And then here are the flower buds that still haven't uh, bloomed out yet. So what this, this plant does is it uh, stretches its flowering period over the entire growing season from spring to summer to late summer so that it can attract pollinators and, and get pollinated over a longer period of time. And then the same thing happens for, for seed dispersal. Right? These are seeds are, are getting prepared to be dispersed right now and then later on these will be ready to disperse and then finally these will be dispersed at last. So you can see that uh, this population has different colors of petals and it produces uh, flowers and seeds at different times to uh, engage the pollinator community and the animal seed dispersers that help it be successful in this environment.